Hello everyone, my name is AirBear. Whether you are upgrading your PC or building one for the first time, I will be removing some of that stress for you guys today because if you are installing or swapping out a motherboard, this guide will be with you every step of the way. And if this walkthrough helps you, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe for future quick, helpful product reviews and walkthroughs. Before we get started, motherboards are very, very susceptible to damage from static electricity. Some static electric shock to the wrong part of the board can actually KO that mobo. So go ahead and protect yourself with a very cheap, simple tool called an anti-static electricity wristband. Or you can take some simple proven precautions like not doing your install on a carpet floor, not wearing socks and walking around the house in the middle of your motherboard install. And another really simple trick is to consistently ground yourself just by touching metal on the inside of your PC case or to touch metal on the frame of a table. Whatever lingering metal components you have around you, if you just give it a simple touch, you will discharge any buildup of static electricity. All right, all we are going to need for this install is a Phillips head screwdriver and some thermal paste. I personally use Arctic MX4. It's a very, very good thermal compound, but this is just personal preference. There are several great thermal compounds out there to choose from. The board we are gonna be installing today is the Asus Z390 Prime A. It's a decent entry level MOBO for overclocking on the eighth and ninth gen chips. Also, Asus has one of the best user interfaces out there as far as the BIOS. The hardware we're gonna be hooking up on the board will be an Intel i9-9900K, an NVIDIA RTX 2070, some Gale Evo Potenza DDR4 RAM, an 120 millimeter AIO cooler, a one terabyte SATA drive, a four terabyte HDD, and some fans. All right, if you're working on a fresh build and you don't have to yank out your old motherboard of your PC, Go ahead and skip ahead to the timestamp on screen, save you some time and get right to what is relevant to you. It'll also be in the description below. For those of you who will have to swap out your old motherboard, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first things first, we're gonna kill the power to the PC and discharge all power lingering in the circuits. So we're gonna switch the PSU to the off position, unplug that power supply, and then we're gonna go up to the top and hit the power button just a few times to make sure that we have fully drained any lingering power. Now go ahead and crack open your case front and back. First thing we're gonna be doing is taking out the GPU to give us all the breathing room that we need. Unplug the power to the GPU, remove all the screws at the rear output that could possibly be holding this GPU in place. And then go ahead and push down at the tab of the front of the PCIe slot and release that GPU. Go ahead and remove the RAM by pushing the tabs down that lock it in place to the motherboard. Some motherboards have tabs at the top and bottom of the RAM. My motherboard only has tabs at the top. Now we're going to remove our CPU cooler. I personally have an all-in-one CPU cooling system that's liquid cooled. Some of you guys are not going to have this, but the process is very similar. Just remove the screws that hold that cooler to the mounting bracket, and then you will also remove any and all case fans after you've removed this cooler. Any fans that possibly are blocking the path of this motherboard coming out of the case. Now it is time to unplug everything from your board. Make sure to properly press down tabs to release your CPU power cords at the top left and the big 24 pin connector at the far right hand side of your board. Push all those cables out of your way and go ahead and unscrew your board from the case. Now that we have our board out of the case, let's go ahead and remove our old IO shield right there at the outputs from your old motherboard. Okay, first things first, let's clean up our CPU and AIO bracket. So I'm gonna be using rubbing alcohol for this. It's supposed to be a 90% mix, but 50% won't hurt at all. Just be careful not to go too heavy on the alcohol and to use clean paper towels when doing this. Now, before I start to install any new components onto this motherboard, I'm gonna go ahead and get it on a softer surface. I like to go ahead and just use the box that this motherboard came in. Now we are installing our RAM on the new board. Read the provided assembly instructions as to which slots to use depending on your RAM setup. Some people have one stick of RAM, two sticks of RAM. The provided instructions will tell you exactly where to go with those sticks depending on how many you are using. All right, now we're installing our CPU, removing the CPU socket cover pushing down on the spring arm and pulling lightly away from the retainer clip to release the CPU holder and the protective cover just pulls right off. If you are swapping from another board, make sure to use that cover on your old board CPU socket just to protect all the pins. There's going to be notches on the side of your CPU that will align with tabs in the CPU socket. Line these up and gently place your CPU into the socket. You don't need any pressure here. Just gently rest it into the socket, aligning with those tabs. You can perform a very, very light shake to make sure that it is seated in place. The CPU is meant to rest in the socket, so avoid using any excessive downward force, or you will damage the internal socket pins, 
and the board will be fried. Go ahead and pull the CPU holder over, push down that spring arm and slide it into the retaining clip. Now, depending on your CPU cooler, it may be easier to install while the board is out of the case, but in my situation, since I have this AIO setup, I'm gonna install my cooler once it is in the case. So before we put our board in, we're gonna install our IO shield. If you don't have one, don't panic. Some motherboards actually have an integrated IO shield that is already attached to the output. And yes, don't fret, sometimes these IO shields take a little bit of force to get properly seated. Time to get this board in the case. Make sure that your spacers are in the correct locations for these screw holes in the motherboard. I find it easiest to align the IO shield and the outputs and then go ahead and seat one screw at the top of the board and then the rest will just fall into place. A little bit of force on the outer edge of the board pushing towards the outputs makes it much easier to get those first top screws in. No need for heavy torque on these screws, just nice and snug will do. Now for our CPU cooler, I always lay my case on its back for this. If you are installing a new cooler, it more than likely has a pre-installed thermal compound on it, but I'm installing my old AIO, so I'll be putting my own thermal compound on. I use the tried and true center dot method. Just about the size of a couple grains of rice is all it takes, no need to go too heavy here. Just a quick note before you go ahead and install this thing, if you're using an AIO cooler, install your CPU power cables prior to mounting the radiator. It's much easier to get to and you won't have to get your fingers into some really tight places. So what I like to do is start on my top right corner, go ahead and get that threaded and then I cross over to the opposite side and get threaded there. I'm not getting them snugged yet until I have every single screw started as far as the threads and then I will snug them down. Now you do want your cooler to be firmly seated to the CPU but be careful not to go too crazy and over tighten here as you can warp your board you can bend the CPU plate and you can possibly damage the CPU socket, which will render the board completely useless. So please just get them nice and finger tight, but don't overkill here. All right, I'm gonna install my CPU radiator. So if you have one, mine is a single radiator and a push-pull configuration with the fan sandwiching the radiator. I put this in at the exhaust of my case. So before we install our graphics card, it's time to get some cable work out of the way because that graphics card is big and bulky and can just kind of be obstructive there. Now cabling can be frustrating, but if you take your time and take note that the board is labeled, although it is very small writing and hard to read, all connectors, whether they are fan, USB, audio, etc., are all labeled and located on the manufacturer's assembly instructions and the motherboard itself. So we already have our CPU power in, which we did before we installed our radiator and our CPU cooler. Next, let's put in our hard drives into their SATA ports or your M.2 drives if you have them. Then we'll be connecting our 24 pin connector, uh, typically found on the right hand side of your board. I had to reroute my top panel USB 3.0 connector to the bottom of the case for this board. Kind of hard to see because it's such a snug fit, but this was actually in a different location on my new MOBO. Now I'm gonna plug up my HD audio, which is commonly found on the bottom left hand side. Take note of the missing pin on the board and on the plug makes connecting this much, much easier. Now it's time for the commonly dreaded power on reset button and header LED cables. These cables are very, very small and labeled and there's typically a good connector that is a, pretty much a guide that's provided with nice motherboards. But if you don't have that, these are labeled and your board is labeled as well. I know it's gonna be very hard to see, but each one of these connectors have a positive and a negative and you'll just sync those up to where they plug in on the board. Last but not least, make sure that all of your case fans, as well as your CPU fans, are plugged in. My fans operate off of an external controller with an RGB remote, so they plug in at the rear of my case and they do not connect to my motherboard, but typically your case fans are gonna connect to fan plugins on your motherboard. And most definitely don't forget to plug in your CPU cooler, whether or not you have a pump configuration or you just have a couple fans, Plug those up right there next to that CPU socket. Now for our graphics card, I actually had a tighter fit now because there's a little white cover over the audio chips on this board. So I had to take my time, find the right angle and get it properly aligned. Once you're lined up with a firm press, it will lock into the PCIe slot. Now it's time to lock in that output alignment screws. Now I like to lift up slightly on the GPU before fully tightening to prevent any GPU sag on your socket. Then lastly, you will plug in your GPU power cables. Now it's time for a solid, really thorough double check on all of your connections and cabling. Make sure that everything is connected and seated well. Make sure that you've double checked your CPU fans because the last thing you want is to boot up your PC and then your CPU overheats and you possibly have damage from it not being cooled. 
Finally, we plug back in that power supply, flip on the PSU, plug up a monitor to that graphics card, and then cross our finger in hopes that we did everything right and boot this motherboard up. Okay, if she doesn't boot, don't panic. Now, most motherboards have LED indicators for the boot process to help you troubleshoot and locate your issue with your boot. So my PC starts on the CPU, then the DRAM, then the GPU, and then the boot drive slash operating system. So if your CPU is damaged, or if your graphics card's not fully connected, or if your DRAM's not set up properly, or if it's not finding my operating system, it is going to stop on that indicator light to let me know where my issue is and help me target and fix it. So in our manufactured situation, our DRAM wasn't properly seated to the board, which made it stop on that specific indicator light for the DRAM. So before I go ahead and fix this, I need to make sure to power back down my system, turn off the power supply and unplug it, discharge any remaining power, and then take off my DRAM and then install it again. Now that I've removed and reinstalled the RAM, I powered it back up and voila, successful boot. Of course, I went straight to overclocking, but there you have it, motherboard install complete. I do hope that this walkthrough has helped you, and if it has, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more helpful quick tutorials as well as product reviews. And also we have a giveaway running once we reach 60K subscribers, we'll be giving away a Battle Beaver custom controller on our Twitch channel. I look forward to whoever the lucky winner is because it is just that, a completely lucky random winner in the chat. But that's it for me, peace.